Okay, and we are live, right? Welcome everyone to the Kronos AMA. Right, I think today it's a very, very exciting topic that we are going to share in the Kronos AMA that everyone in the ecosystem is excited about, right? About Kronos scalability and how Kronos is advancing scalability and TPS in 2023. Right, so firstly, my name is Jay, right? I'm part of the Kronos Partnerships team. And today we have two guests together with me who will be sharing more information about this topic. Right, so I'll pass the time on to both Ken and Matt to give a quick introduction about themselves. Right, Ken, you can, you can kick start first. Yeah, uh, so I'm Ken. I'm the head of Kronos Labs, the um, uh, ecosystem development arm and a startup uh, accelerator focused on the development of the Kronos blockchain and its ecosystem. And Matt? Yeah, hi, I'm Matt. I'm the CEO of Caldera. Um, we're a platform that allows projects to launch high performance, super inexpensive to use, customizable layer two blockchains. Uh, and yeah, we're really excited to start working with Kronos. Awesome, right, great to have you here with us today, Matt. Right, and Ken and the Kronos team, we have been you know, working on this scaling solution for quite some time. And you know, we have been keeping this under wraps, but it's a very exciting announcement that we want to share with everyone today. Right, so Ken, uh, I will leave it to you to share this exciting announcement to everyone. Yeah, uh, so in terms of what we want to accomplish today, uh, we want to share uh, today's announcement, uh, and we also want to take some time to put this announcement in context, uh, in the context of the broader uh, roadmap of Kronos uh, protocol in 2023. So today's announcement is that uh, finally, uh, optimistic layer two rollups are available on Kronos mainnet, uh, and of course testnet, uh, but more importantly, mainnet. Uh, and that is possible thanks to uh, a partnership that has been going on now since April and has been, has been going very well uh, with Caldera, uh, of which Matt is the CEO of. And Caldera really specializes in uh, what, you know, what, we, what is called in, in industry a roll-up as a service. Um, so when you... Um, when you want to deploy a blockchain, you have to come up with an open source protocol, like right? an open source technology. But oftentimes, the hardest part is to deploy the network and run it with high performance nodes and to automate uh, the maintenance and monitoring of that network to make sure that it's fully reliable as a financial infrastructure for the world. And so that's what Caldera is is really, really good at, and, and we'll talk about uh, what they do and their strengths and their technology a, a bit more uh, later in this um, uh, in this live stream. Uh, so for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to elaborate a little bit on um, what this announcement means, what is a layer two for those who are not familiar with the concept, and what are the benefits for the Kronos ecosystem. Uh, so, to set the stage uh, for people who you know, need a, a quick refresher about what Kronos is. Uh, so, Kronos is what we call a layer one blockchain, uh, meaning that it's a chain that has its own network of validators uh, who guarantee the security of uh, transactions made on the chain. Uh, in the case of Kronos, the, uh, it's what we call a, a POA, proof of authority chain. There are 27 uh, world-class validators who have been selected by uh, 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 like progressively uh, by existing validators as um, you know, among uh, operators who have experience uh, running uh, validators at scale and with high performance. Uh, many of them you know, have a bigger business, which is that they run staking as a service uh, platforms and so they are really used. Uh, they are really used to running validators, particularly Cosmos validators. Uh, so Kronos is EVM compatible, uh, meaning that from the standpoint of users and developers, uh, the experience of using Kronos is uh, the same as using 
Ethereum or any Ethereum derived chain like Polygon, uh, BNB chain, Avalanche, etc. Except that, of course, it's uh, faster, cheaper, and uh, carbon neutral uh, in the case of Kronos. Uh, Kronos is the leading uh, chain within those VM compatible chains, which is built on the Cosmos SDK uh, and is therefore interoperable with the Cosmos ecosystem, which nowadays is really a, a vibrant and up and coming uh, ecosystem of chains. Kronos is live since November 2021, uh, and you know uh, throughout you know, its short but uh, intense life, it's a chain that has uh, validated more than 70 million transactions and secured billions of uh, of US dollars in total value locked in various DeFi protocols. So Kronos is what we call layer one chain. Uh, and uh, in terms of uh, scalability, um, it's a chain that is designed to uh, deliver one block every five to six, sec five to six seconds currently. Uh, each block can support a certain amount of uh, compute work, uh, which in the language of Ethereum is measured with a unit of gas. So, um, Each block supports right now 40 million gas, uh, where 40 million gas um, sizes the amount of computing that the nodes can deliver each time that they validate a block. And uh, in terms of transaction throughput, uh, Kronos is already able to support several million transactions per day, uh, which is way more than uh, current demand, of course. Uh, so right now we're... Uh, we don't have a, a, a bandwidth problem in Kronos. Uh, rather, we're always thinking about how we prepare for the upcoming, uh, the next market cycle, the next bull market. And so right now, we're already able to support uh, several million transactions per day. Uh, but even though demand is smaller than that, we want to be able to support much more than millions of transactions per day. Uh, and so that's where layer two comes in. Come in. Uh, so a, a layer two is... Um, as the name implies, another blockchain that sits on top of the layer one. Uh, if you took, if you take a layer two blockchain, uh, it is similar to layer one in the sense that it's a protocol that supports wallets, uh, where you can deploy tokens and you can deploy uh, you can deploy smart contracts and applications. Uh, such as games, DeFi protocols, etc. Uh, the main difference between the layer two and the layer one, however, is that the layer two does not need to have its own network of validators to guarantee its security. Uh, rather, what the layer two does is you know, every few minutes, uh, typically 10 to 20 minutes, it uh, batches all its transactions and uh, uh, engraves the state of um, the whole chain onto a smart contract that sits in the layer one. Uh, and therefore, uh, because that immutable engravement sits in the layer one, it means that the layer two relies on the layer one uh, for its uh, security and, to, and, and for its decentralization. Uh, additionally, uh, It, it varies, right? Uh, the way to make it, to make it happen varies between technologies, but usually uh, a layer two always has a native uh, bridge uh, with the layer one, which means that uh, users are able to take their crypto assets and move them to the layer two, where they can benefit from more scalability. Uh, and, but also at any time, they're able to uh, withdraw their funds, uh, and so therefore. Uh, that's another way that the uh, layer two relies on the security of the layer one, which is that usually the layer two guarantees that you can withdraw your funds as a user from the layer two uh, and put it back into the layer one, which is the more uh, the safer under it to hold in the long term. So usually a layer two is designed for uh, cheap, fast uh, transactions. Uh, but oftentimes for, for transactional activity, uh, whereas you would typically rely on the layer one for long-term holdings. 
So the benefits of the layer two uh, are uh, uh, you know, many fold. And uh, in the case of Caldera, what happened is that uh, the Kronos engineering team uh, worked very closely since April with, the, with Matt and the Caldera team to test uh, on testnet and then on mainnet uh, the benefits of deploying Caldera technology uh, on top of Kronos. Uh, so the first uh, very important benefit is that a layer two is very low cost because uh, all the transactions are batched uh, and therefore you need to pay uh, transaction fees on Kronos, the layer one, but you, you can share the cost of the, of the layer one transaction among many transactions. And so what happened is that our team uh, you know, sent more than 200,000 transactions on the layer two that we deployed for testing uh, and on average, uh, each uh, transaction costs less than 0 0.001 uh, US dollar, which make those transactions really appropriate for high volume uh, use cases, such as you know, games in particular, uh, or kind of social um, use cases of blockchain. The second very important benefit of this layer two uh, that uh, we deploy together with Caldera is that it's EVM compatible. Therefore, um, if you're an app developer, uh, typically what you would do is you would start deploying your app on Kronos layer one, uh, because that's the simple thing to do. Uh, and that's the best way to make it easily accessible to users. But then as your DAP uh, grows in usage, uh, and starts to generate you know, tens of, of thousands or hundreds of thousands of monthly active users, uh, then you will think about creating a dedicated uh, app chain uh, as a layer two, uh, powered by Caldera. Uh, but when you do that transition from the layer one to the layer two, you don't need to change your smart contract for the most part. Uh, of course, you need to do some testing, but you don't need to recreate your app because both chains, the layer one and the layer two are equally uh, EVM compatible. Uh, third benefit, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, this layer two is secured by the Kronos layer one. So you can still rely on uh, the trust that you have that Kronos is a chain that is here to stay, you know, that has a um, runway that is well-funded and uh, that is supported by credible uh, institutional partners who are guaranteeing its long-term viability. Uh, and finally, uh, you know, when you um, use a layer two on top of Kronos, you're, you're still part of the CroFarm ecosystem, uh, of the Kronos ecosystem, which includes crypto.com, crypto.org, uh, and all those partners who represent together more than 80 million end users around the world. Uh, I can see some questions, by the way, in, in, on YouTube, and uh, we, we will address them uh, later on. Uh, for now, I'm just giving the big picture. Uh, so that's those are the, la the, the, the benefits of a layer two. Now, in, in terms of how we envision this layer two to, to, to be deployed and used in the context of Kronos is not... Uh, in, so we don't anticipate the layer two to replace Kronos uh, as the as the base layer um, where most users will be transacting. Rather, the architecture that we have in mind right now is that uh, the layer one Kronos will continue to exist. And uh, on top of it, uh, several layer twos will be deployed, uh, enabled by Caldera, uh, but under the direction of specific application developers uh, who uh, will create layer tools that are specific to a DAP or a, uh, you know, specific, a specific sub ecosystem of Kronos, for example, a, a gaming or social ecosystem. Uh, so here in, in this construct, what you would see are clean chains, uh, each chain dedicated to specific DAPs or use cases, uh, each chain uh, being able to interoperate and connect to the other chains thanks to those native bridges that I was referring to before. Each chain also has the ability to have its own uh, token. Uh, so it's important to have the tokenomics right 
because the chain needs to pay transaction fees uh, to the layer one. So if you're designing a layer two, you need to make sure that you're collecting revenue from your users uh, enough that you can pay for the, the transaction fees on Kronos. Uh, but you have you know, a lot of freedom in terms of how you design this. And in particular, it's possible for the layer two to have a different token than the Crow. Uh, although it will need to consume Crow in order to guarantee its security. Uh, and finally, you know, the, the very important point here is that when you look at the layer one and the layer twos together, uh, what they mean is that Kronos now is able to support uh, hundreds or even thousands of transactions per second uh, through this mesh of layer twos who are sharing a common layer one as the base settlement layer. Uh, so at high level, that is today's announcement. Uh, and to recap, uh, today's announcement is that uh, the, um, as of today, it is possible for uh, developers uh, to deploy uh, opt optimistic uh, layer two rollups on top of Kronos in production uh, on the mainnet. And that is possible thanks to uh, Caldera, who, who will therefore have a commercial offering available to those developers to assist them in the deployment and operation of those layer tools uh, secured by Kronos. Right. Thanks, Ken, uh, for the partnership announcement. Right. So the layer two topic has, is probably the hottest topic of the year in crypto. Right. We see a lot of layer twos up, uh, has already launched and many up and coming layer twos. Right. And I think the whole topic of a monolithic blockchain being able to modularize Right, the different stacks of the chain, right? The execution, the DA, and ultimately the consensus layer, right? So now let's go into a bit of the technical um, definition of, of rollups, right? So Matt here is obviously the expert for what is an optimistic rollup, right? So perhaps Matt, can you give our users who are tuning in some uh, understanding of what is an optimistic rollup? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and so actually that that diagram that we just had, um, what was I think a, a pretty useful um, thing to see, but like, you know, an optimistic rollup is in short, it's, it is like its own logical blockchain that inherits security from some layer one chain. And so Ken earlier was talking about gas as this like unit, uh, nebulous like unit of computation. When you as a user, when you're sending a transaction to a blockchain, you're really paying for three things. You're paying for that data, like your transaction packet to be sent to the chain. So like, you know, my address, your address, the amount of tokens I'm sending from me to you, that transaction data is getting sent on chain. Then you're also paying for the actual execution of the smart contract code that you're calling. And you're paying for the storage that uh, that smart contract code is doing. So like if you're updating a balance on the blockchain, that's like a storage operation. And so what an optimistic rollup does or what a rollup in general does is it uh, you know, you send that transaction data rather than to a main chain, you send it to a layer two. That layer two chain um, effectively acts kind of off chain, moving that execution and storage, the really computationally intensive, the gas intensive parts of that. It takes that burden off of the layer one and it just posts transaction data to the layer one. Um, so in that way, you can always reconstruct the state of that layer two chain with the, the data that's sent to the L1. So in some sense, you're inheriting security from Kronos in this in this case, but you're still able to run transactions way cheaper because you're saving on that storage and the execution. And so that's like rollups in general. The optimistic part um, kind of comes uh, gets you know you're talking about consensus. The optimistic part is what happens if the rollup acts dishonestly, right? You're kind of running this chain off of the layer. Uh, you know you're running a layer two chain off chain from the layer one. What happens if that layer two chain um, isn't telling the truth to the layer one? And so you have two. Uh, you know, main designs, you have either ZK or optimistic. Optimistic um, is what we went with because it's just the most mature stack right now, being able to run optimistic rollups. Optimistic rollups have been run in production mode, securing hundreds of millions to billions of TBL for the last couple of years. ZK rollups are a lot more nascent. Um, but what optimistic rollups do is they, uh, it's, it's called optimistic because everyone's starting assumption is that the rollup is acting honestly. Um, and that's going to happen most of the time um, because, you know, rollups really aren't incentivized to lie. But if the rollup does act dishonestly, does submit an invalid um, state, 
you know, uh, and you can com compare that state with the transactions that are sent to the L1, then a dispute process um, occurs on the layer one. So users can be confident that as long as someone, a single person is checking that, uh, that chain and making sure that the layer two blockchain is acting honestly, they can submit a dispute process. And then if it turns out the chain is acting dishonestly, it gets slashed, users can withdraw funds, that sort of thing. And so in that way, you're able to run this separate app chain while still inheriting security from Kronos L1. Right. Thanks, man. I think you managed to explain a very technical concept into much simpler terms. Um, and so Cardera, right? Rollup as a service. There are several solutions out there which you know, allows application developers to create their rollup. So perhaps can you share more about the value prop of Caldera? Like how are you guys positioning yourself? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I guess in general, there are you know a lot of benefits to launching a rollup or like an app chain um, just in general, right? Like you have performance, you're going to have much lower fees, higher throughput. You have, uh, and I think this is underappreciated by a lot of folks, but you're going to kind of have like a dedicated lane to scale. So you're not going to run into like resource contention issues fighting over, you know, as many computational resources on the main chain with other applications. You also have like customizability, anything from, uh, you know, modifying chain parameters, like block gas limits, all the way up to like adding new features into the EVM itself. We recently worked with a team that like needed uh, certain encryption, uh, like cryptography functions that weren't natively available in the EVM, but they needed them in the EVM. We we're able to offer that to them. Um, and as well, there's like an element of value capture. You can make money from transaction fees. You can, uh, as Ken mentioned, you can make, allow users to pay for gas in your project's token, that sort of thing. Um, and so for us, like these are all use cases that we can support as Caldera. We aim to be like one of the most, uh, you know, customizable rollup providers. That's definitely part of how we position ourselves. But I think the main thing for us is like, at the end of the day, like we want to be a long-term infrastructure partner for the teams that we're working with. And so a big part of that is like maximizing developer choice. And that's why, you know, we're working with you guys at Kronos because, you know, we suspect that a lot of teams are going to want to build layer two chains on Kronos, right? And, and we want to enable that use case. We also come with all sorts of additional infrastructure that a lot of other rollups and service providers don't provide. So you can kind of think of us as like an all-in-one solution. So we provide the rollup itself, um, but we also provide like a block explorer, an interface for bridging, um, an indexer, so you can get easy access to data uh, on the blockchain. And we're also like really rapidly building up our set of infrastructure partners. So if you needed something else like oracles, NFT marketplace, NFT indexers, uh, graph protocol, compatible indexers, that sort of thing, we can bring in those relevant partners. And it's really, really easy to like create a highly viable chain very quickly with us without needing to wrangle around uh, with infrastructure or write a line of like backend code. And so for us, we're really positioned for application developers who might need, you know, their own chain because they're building a game and they need a bunch of, you know, as much scalability as possible, but they don't really want to like get in the weeds, spin up an entirely new team at their company, figure out how to do consensus, figure out how to write a blockchain in like the Cosmos SDK. Um, you know, we're, we're for those teams that really want to push that responsibility to another team and focus on building as good of an application as they can. Right. And I think that makes a lot of sense, right? Because a lot of application developers, their specialty is, is creating right, user facing depth, right? They might not have that much expertise in the infra side of things, by right? creating a backend to, cre uh, to, to create their own rollout solution. And I think that's where you guys provide a lot of value. Right? So I, I see in the, in the chat, there's a lot of chatter about right, games utilizing your solution to create their own L2. So let, now let's talk about that, right? Who are the developers that should you know, approach you guys to spin up their rollups? What are the typical use cases? Yeah, so games are the really obvious one. Um, really what I would say to kind of expand that set um, and what we've seen in the market is like, basically, if you're an application and you're thinking about doing a lot on chain, that could be just minting a ton of NFTs. If you're a consumer NFT project, maybe it's, yeah, running a lot of games. Uh, sorry, like if you're a fully on-chain game, sending a lot of game transactions. If you're like a typical like Web2 game, maybe you're just onboarding a lot of users. You want to make sure that... Uh, your users have low transaction fees. Maybe you're subsidizing your users' transaction fees in case you probably want them to be as low as possible. Um, you know, to like, but we've seen interest from like on-chain social networks, 
um, like order book DEXs that are running, you know, a lot of transactions on chain. So the real unifying thing for a lot of these, um, the teams that we work with is just like, they're trying to do a lot of on-chain activity um, and, and, or they need some customizations that, you know, typical L1s can't provide, but they still want to build within some existing L1 ecosystem. So if you're a game and you really want to build on Kronos, but you know, you, you have like crazy performance requirements, we would rather you still build on Kronos using Caldera versus like trying to launch like a Cosmos app chain and taking on a lot of headache there. Um, and so that's kind of like the unifying factor um, for a lot of teams that, that we work with, but it really is a varied, you know, it varies across sectors. You work with some DeFi protocols, NFT protocols, gaming, um, really anyone can use a solution like this. Right. Yeah, I, I can see the value there, like a game or an application with you know, huge and heavy smart contract interactions you know, can utilize you guys to really cut down the cost for their, for their end users. Right. So now let's talk about you know, the, app, the developers themselves. Let's say I'm a developer and I want to partner with Caldera. Right? What are the steps that I as a developer have to take to work together with you? And, and what are the key things that I should think about? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, I mean, truthfully, I think at, at Caldera, we want to make it as easy as possible for people to launch a custom chain. And so the thing I would say um, for most developers who are like think, thinking about this is just to think very deeply about like what they need um, and have like clear, clear asks for our team. Um, we're really, really hands-on with the projects we work with. Uh, we are able to support, we're able to loop in other infrastructure partners, as I mentioned. Um, and so like really there is no job that's like too big for, for us to take on. Really, we found that we've been able to satisfy like most customer requests as long as folks have like a solid idea of, of what their needs are. Um, and so that, you know, extends from like chain parameters, right? Things like how, how much gas do you think your application is going to consume per second? What about like at peak? Um, if there are any like additional features that, that people need, right? Things like custom gas tokens or um, new pre-compiles or native support for X, Y, or Z, um, as well as like additional infrastructure, you know, providers. Um, but really like I would encourage like anyone who's interested in something like this to talk to us because I think a lot of people have kind of preconceived notions about what a rollup can do and what a rollup can't do. And we've often found that those don't necessarily line up with like um, our, our actual uh, functionality. So this is interesting to you. Um, you know, talk to us and we'll help you work through a lot of these thorny tech, uh, technology questions. Awesome. So, so a very technical partner to, you know, the application layer developers. Totally. Awesome. So just like you mentioned that, you know, there are some partners, some toolings available on, you know, the Caldera rollup, um, included and developed by you guys. Can you share what those partners, what those toolings are? Yeah. So in terms of like the tools that have been developed by us, um, you get the rollup node itself that's run, you know, on industry standard infrastructure. We've put in a lot of work to make that reliable. And I can say that out of all the rollups that we've launched so far, there's been zero actual downtime, um, including our like public test nets, uh, which have, uh, you know, handled at this point, like millions of transactions um, between all of them in aggregate. Um, so you get that, you get a historical node, an archive node for historical data, um, but you also get an interface for bridging. So you have both like an SDK for developers and also like a basic UI that you can hand off to your users to allow them to bridge funds back and forth. Super important, of course. Um, an indexer for data, block explorer just to view blocks. That itself comes with an API, kind of like the Etherscan API. So if you just want to like, you know, make quick queries about like what NFTs a user owns or what tokens a user owns or uh, user balances, you can do that via the block explorer API. Um, but we we also, as I mentioned, have a ton of a ton of partners. Um, we work with Hyperlane, um, which is another interoperability provider. So if you wanted cross chain interoperability, they would be uh, your best bet. We partnered with a couple um, Oracle providers. Uh, one's called Supra. Uh, they do like price feeds and VRF. Another one's called Redstone. They also do uh, price feeds, kind of like a Pith um, type of model. Um, and we've, uh, we're starting to look into the account abstraction space. And so I can't fully announce that yet, but like, we're hoping to support account abstraction very soon and as well integrate with, you know, one of the usual suspects for account abstraction wallets. That's obviously a super highly requested feature. Right. So seems like you dropped some alpha here. Um, yeah. yeah. So sounds like a lot of infrastructure technicalities, 
you know, um, indexing the chain, finding the right oracles, Explorer, which are you know, something that devs team typically do not want to think too much about, right? And, and you guys abstract that layer away as a service, right? And developers can focus on what, what they are good at. Okay, so thanks for, you know, giving this very in-depth detail and sharing about Caldera. So maybe back to Ken, why did Kronos eventually choose to work with Caldera, right, as a, as a rollout solution? So um, a few reasons. Uh, so first of all, I think it's important to pay our respects to the you know, open source technology that we're building on top of, right? So uh, OP Labs uh, has uh, pioneered optimistic rollout technology in the EVM world. Uh, we're very grateful to them as a community. We all, I think we and the, um, I think the Caldera team also are hoping to be able to contribute back uh, to the ecosystem over time and not just use other people's work. Uh, but so, for, you know, so for, first of all, un, you know, underpinning all of this, there is a strong foundation, uh, which is that technology that uh, uh, optimistic rollup, you know, that um, has been in production for a while and that um, has uh, proven to be extremely reliable. Uh, number two, Caldera themselves, you know, come with stellar credentials. Um, they, their investors include Ethereal Ventures, Sequoia, uh, Dragonfly Capital, uh, other world-class investors. And so in terms of selecting a partner who's uh, likely to have some runway and to, you know, is here to stay, th that was a very important consideration for us. And number three, you know, of course, we don't um, make technical decisions you know, just based on CV. Uh, we do testing. And so, like I said before, uh, our protocol engineering team, and I'm very grateful to them as well, uh, has spent a few weeks since April uh, working with the Caldera team. Uh, what the Kronos team did was really uh, set up a, uh, a framework to benchmark uh, chains. And so they've been um, sending transactions to those uh, dedicated chains that we've set up with, with Caldera, first in testnet, then on mainnet, you know, at peak at various levels of TPS, you know, 10, 50, 100, 200 TPS uh, to see how the, the, the infrastructure was behaving. And, you know, I must say uh, the professionalism and the reliability of the Caldera team uh, has been uh, world class. And so that's really the, the third very important criteria which uh, sealed our decision to, to partner with them. Uh, I have been in blockchain for a while now. I know that usually when people make announcements and say that they have a product, in general, you know, they are, what happens, the reality is that they are, they are planning, they are building the plane at the same time that they're flying it. And so things don't usually don't work uh, out of the box. Uh, and the experience of working with a partner, you know, starts with very high expectations. And usually it's all downhill from here. Uh, that wasn't the case with Caldera. You know, when they say they do something, they do it. Uh, they do it extremely quickly. And it works. Uh, it just works out of the box. And so the experience of working with them was really um, uh, uh, very, very positive. Right, so it's a very, very great experience and a great team right, um, behind Caldera. Um, so I think as an application developer, when I want to make my choice, right, as whether should I build using Caldera, I think one key question is about performance. So what, what are the performance um, that an application developer can expect by using Caldera, right? But, uh, this question is for you, Matt. Yeah. Uh, and so also, um, first of all, thanks, Ken, so much for the kind words. And also a big shout out to the Kronos team, because I, out of any of our partners, Kronos has done um, the most like benchmarking and due diligence, which we see as like a really, really positive sign uh, for the Kronos ecosystem, of course. Um, and so, yeah, um, because of that, like we're able to give really, really hard numbers um, for uh, what performance might look like um, for a, an L2 that's running on top of Kronos. Um, we can like confidently say easily 200 plus TPS um, transactions per second. Um, I think another really important thing uh, for, for performance, especially for a lot of user facing apps is latency. And the nice thing about rollups is like, you're going to get sub second latency, effectively like instant 
um, confirmation times. And so you can provide like a web two ish UX um, to your users. You don't need to leave users hanging, waiting for confirmations of, you know, several blocks. Um, so, you know, call it, depending on where you are in the world relative to your sequencer location, call it 200 to 500 milliseconds of latency. Um, and of course, uh, as, as Ken mentioned, like definitely, definitely sub one cent um, per transaction uh, for a typical transaction, whether that's like sending tokens, a swap, an NFT mint, et cetera, all roughly uh, cost pretty similar um, below a cent uh, per transaction there. So can support many, many transactions for a relatively low cost. Right. So I think from, from an end user perspective, much, much cheaper transactions, which is very appreciated if let's say a game, right, has a lot of interactions within the dev itself. And I think the latency improvement is something that would be a great value, right, to both the application developers and, and to the end users. Right. Um, okay, so perhaps back to you, Ken. How does this partnership with Caldera, right, between Kronos and Caldera really fit into Chrono scalability roadmap. Yes, let me take a step back and re recap how this fits into the, the bigger picture, uh, which I think is also uh, what uh, a few users have asked about on, on YouTube in their questions. Uh, so broadly speaking, if you take a step back, uh, we have a scalability roadmap for Chronos. And that scalability roadmap uh, relies on three work streams. The first one, we call it a layer one core optimization. Uh, and so that's everything that we can do uh, to make Kronos better as a layer one without changing you know, radically uh, the way that it is designed. So that's number one. Number two uh, is um, layer two rollups uh, on top of Kronos. Uh, and then number three is what we called uh, Kronos Next Level or Next Level Experiments when we published uh, updates about the, the roadmap last year and this year. Uh, so let me describe what each of those work streams entails and what's the, the status so far. Core optimization. Uh, a, a lot of work has already been done uh, during the first half of 2023. And uh, of course, all that work has been published, but oftentimes in uh, you know, the technical documentation associated with the upgrades that were made. Uh, so many of the people in the audience may not have uh, fully grasped the significance of those upgrades which were already done. Uh, so I I'll just uh, mention some of the main ones. Uh, so first of all, uh, there was a migration from a database technology to store the chain, uh, RocksDB, to another database technology, uh, version DB, uh, which nodes have the option to activate. Uh, and that's really helpful because it reduces the amount of hard drive storage required uh, to store a node by 62%. Uh, so it, it's not that the nodes are 62% of the previous one. It's really a 62% reduction, so more than half reduction uh, of the, the storage. Uh, second improvement, uh, so they've, uh, the protocol engineers have implemented uh, what they call a fast node mode, uh, thanks to a different way uh, of um, uh, implementing the nodes. And this has resulted in 50% faster node response time. Uh, so node response time is the time that it takes for a node to send back a response when uh, someone is posting a transaction or uh, requesting some data from the blockchain. Uh, this has been improved by half. Uh, number three, uh, the, you know, through the discussions that have happened among the Kronos and Cosmos community, they have discovered that um, the way that transaction execution was implemented on Kronos required um, uh, the nodes to verify several times the validity of the signature sent by the anyone who was sending a transaction. And that was um, kind of a, a design flow that um, resulted in uh, nodes taking too much time to execute transactions. 
you f of course you find those flows all the time right that it's part of the process of iterative development uh, and so through a, a new way of uh, address recovery uh, which verifies the validity of that signature only once uh, the team was able to in uh, increase uh, node the execution of transactions by the nodes by 30% and finally, uh, I mean, it's not fi finally on this slide. There, there are other uh, improvements that I will talk about. But uh, finally, on this slide, uh, the team has rolled out uh, what they call public JSON RPC 2.0. Uh, so that's uh, the, the public JSON RPC is the, the URL that uh, you connect your wallet to, uh, evm.chronos.org, when you want to read the chain or um, uh, post transactions. Uh, it's a vast network of nodes of dozens of nodes, uh, which is uh, offered to the community for free. Uh, a, a new version of that has been ro rolled out. Uh, and um, going forward, it is able to uh, uh, send back more consistent responses, uh, meaning you know, if you uh, ask the same question multiple times to the, uh, to the nodes, such as you know, what is the latest block height or, or what is the value of a variable, uh, you will get a much more consistent response now, uh, and you will get it to, uh, 20 to 50% faster. Uh, so that's what was delivered uh, during the first half of this year. Uh, during the second half of 2023, there are a number of uh, work streams that are uh, in development under evaluation that will further strengthen the uh, throughput uh, the reliability and the operability of the chain. Uh, so the first one is the reduction of block times. Uh, so currently on testnet, uh, we're on Chronos testnet, uh, we're uh, evaluating the performance of the chain when blocks are produced every two seconds uh, instead of every five to six seconds. It's likely that we won't reduce block time on mainnet uh, to two seconds you know, right away, because operationally that's fairly risky. But we can aspirationally expect that uh, block time will be reduced to three to four seconds on mainnet. Uh, and that means a commensurate increase of the transaction throughput. Uh, if you have more blocks uh, and each block has the same capacity, then you have more transactions that you can process. Uh, so that, that's going to be very uh, significant. Uh, there's going to be uh, a, a new implementation of uh, a IAVL, uh, which is the kind of algorithm that blockchains use to organize data and to calculate hashes. Uh, with this new um, algorithm, we expect nodes to uh, we expect to make it extremely uh, easier for nodes to generate and load snapshots. Uh, so snapshots are those sort of backups of the, of the chain that are used when you're spinning up a node uh, and you want it to catch up with the latest block on the chain. Uh, and so with this new technology, we expect snapshot restoration to decrease from 16 hours to five minutes and the snapshot size uh, to reduce greatly as well, which means it will be even easier for anyone to run their own node. Uh, and there are other improvements as well that uh, we will talk about uh, when we publish a more detailed roadmap update, uh, which I expect to happen on Thursday uh, at uh, blog.chronos.org. So to recap, uh, there are three work streams. Uh, number one is um, the optimization of the core layer one. Uh, so that's ongoing. And as, as you can see, it's really... Uh, it really enhances not just the speed, but also the reliability and usability of the chain. Uh, and that's going very, very well. Number two is uh, Chronos rollups. So that's the, that was the current focus of the announcement when we talked about optimistic rollups together with uh, Caldera. Uh, but we're also uh, you know, uh, in R&D mode when it comes to exploring uh, the use cases for ZK, ZK rollups on top of Chronos uh, and who to work with, uh, who to partner with. Uh, so there will be more news on that soon uh, or in a few months. And number three, you know, th there is what we call Chronos Next Level, which is more experimental uh, and is much earlier stage in terms of development. 
Uh, today, we don't have anything to announce really on, on uh, Kronos Next Level. Uh, the themes on which uh, the team is working remain more or less the same. Uh, so the, the themes are, you know, if you go layer by layer, they are around like what part of the infrastructure can we share with crypto.org uh, to make it uh, uh, even um, more profitable for, for, for nodes to participate in the security of the ecosystem. Uh, so that's a topic that the Cosmos community at large is working on, of course. Uh, another topic that the Cosmos community is working on is uh, what is called modular data availability. So it's the ability to store data uh, outside of chain, uh, outside of the chain, uh, and only use the chain to store hashes of the data. Uh, so proof of, proof of existence of the data. Uh, so there's a lot of protocols uh, and ideas around that in the Cosmos ecosystem, and our team is contributing uh, to that and testing that. Uh, and lastly, uh, also in the Cosmos community, there are a few R&D work streams around parallelizing the execution of transactions uh, to gain even more speed in um, uh, on the chain, and our team is following that closely. So those are the three work streams, right, to to to, to set the stage. Uh, it's important not to underestimate uh, the importance of stream one because really uh, the core improvements that are made to the protocol are part of what guarantees that it remains sustainable and viable in the long run. Uh, but definitely today's announcement around optimistic rollups uh, is a major breakthrough in this roadmap. And we're very happy that we're able to, to deliver this um, in the middle of 2023. Right. Thanks, Ken, for the very detailed sharing about Kronos Scalability Roadmap. Right. And I mean, as all the users can see, it's a lot of gradual optimizations and breakthroughs that will ultimately drive towards the end goal, right? Which is a chain or rollups or app chains, right? Which can allow for a lot of uh, transactions um, that we can handle uh, and for, for dev developers to provide great user experience to the end users. Right. So now, you know, I'm quite curious. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the, and I think a few people in the chat are asking, like, wh why, what's the value of this? Like, why are we increasing throughput? And so I think it's important to share our views about that. So first of all, uh, yeah, so layer tools uh, will contribute in increasing the demand because we're not just uh, increasing the TPS. We're also dramatically lowering the cost of transactions for use cases that don't have exactly the same security requirements as you know, high-value DeFi transactions. And so, yes, I think uh, it's very important to understand that when you reduce the cost of transaction, you're, cre you're creating an innovation space where new use cases can become viable. Um, I think, you know, uh, if you take Web3 Gaming, um, right now it doesn't really work uh, uh, for, 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 for gaming actions, right? Right now, what we call Web3 Gaming is really issuing and trading NFTs on the chain and then doing everything else off chain. Uh, so the availability of very low cost transactions make it possible to create an innovation space which which can prompt demand. Um, so that's the first value of doing all of this, right? The first value is that uh, by enhancing, um, making the chain cheaper, we create new use cases and new demand. Uh, but also, uh, you know, I think that uh, you know, I, I, the second point that I want to make is I understand why everyone is impatient. Uh, everyone wants to see uh, the next cycle arrive. Uh, but it will take time, you know, the economy is still in shambles. Uh, there is war uh, at many places in the in the world. Uh, like most mainstream users right now are mostly thinking about either the safety of the, of the family or their ability to put food on the table. And we need to respect that this is going to be the case for a while. We need to be patient, but we are not going to stop building. Uh, so uh, what we've communicated about multiple times is that the, the right now in crypto, uh, there's hardly, there's not a lot of new users coming in. A lot of the price action that we're seeing are uh, whales and um, 
uh, degen traders uh, making bets on uh, cryptocurrencies uh, that they see as uh, up and coming. But what really what we're building for is the next cycle where new users are going to come into the ecosystem. And we're not going to stop building, even though um, we know that it's going to take a while before the market recovers. Right. Uh, I think that's really great points that, that you make, Ken. Right. Uh, talking about the next wave of users, which will onboard into the, the blockchain ecosystem. Right. So I think on this topic, maybe I want to get both Matt and Ken your views, right? Like, what are your vision? of multi-chain scalability in our industry down the line. Right? Perhaps, Matt, do, do you want to take this question first? Sure, yeah. And I think uh, I'll actually defer to um, one of the, the things that Ken mentioned earlier on in this presentation, uh, which is kind of like uh, like a mesh network or like you know multiple layer twos on top of layer ones. That's something we're really bought into. I think like, you know, there's, there's a couple of competing visions of app chain scalability. There's one where effectively like every project is running their own dedicated separate app chain and they're managing, you know, all this infrastructure and every chain has their own like validator set, et cetera. Um, and we think that like the operational burden of something like that is just way too high. We are really, really committed to this idea of, you know, synergistic layer twos that get built on top of layer ones to abstract away some of these, these costs to provide a little bit of additional customizability. And then effectively, this makes every single layer one chain its own kind of app chain ecosystem where you're going to have layer twos and eventually potentially even layer threes being built on top of it. And it's all going to be harmonized by interoperability. And, you know, it's all going to eventually still lead to value accrual on some layer one chain. So we're, we're really excited for that to happen on Ethereum and for that to happen on Kronos chain and for that to happen on a, a whole lot of uh, other, you know, L1s that exist. Um, and, you know, we see that being... The future, um, especially for a lot of these application developers who, at the end of the day, they might need their own chain eventually, um, just due to their performance requirements, but they don't necessarily want to deal with the the burden of running their, their own separate chain. And we see a lot of the new applications that are coming out really fall into that category. And so we're, we're really bullish on, you know, the current vision for app chain scaling. Yeah. Well, what about you, Ken? What's your vision of, of scaling, scalability? Yeah, so I think that uh, the Kronos uh, team, you know, is philosophically very aligned with uh, the Cosmos ecosystem overall, right? And so that vision of sovereign chains uh, of the idea that, um, that it's not one uh, Ethereum killer who's going to control everything, but rather an, an ecosystem of chains that are going to coexist. Uh, in the same way that uh, so we see chains as uh, as digital countries in a way, right? So in the same way that you have the US, you know, Japan, France, Germany, each with their own culture, economy, uh, and idiosyncrasies. Uh, in the same way, we're going to see chains, sovereign chains that are formed not around geographical boundaries, but rather cultural and community boundaries. Uh, and you know, it's clear. You know, the, it's clear nowadays that each a chain has its own personality uh, and culture. Uh, and so th that's really a belief that we are taking from the Cosmos community and uh, is inherent to that. And so in a way, you know, with this idea of um, app chains on top of Kronos, uh, we're going even further, right? We're saying it's not just chains who should have some level of sovereignty. Um, it's also app developers who should have the, uh, the freedom and ability to uh, have some level of sovereignty around the communities that they're creating. And so we're putting the tools in their hands so that they're able to do that. But of course, do that in a responsible way where still uh, they can rely on uh, Kronos and the Kronos ecosystem and the backers of Kronos to ensure the security of their chain. Uh, so I think that that's going very well. I'm, I'm very happy to see that uh, those technologies are emerging and uh, delivering that promise of sovereignty. Uh, on the other hand, I think it's clear that um, one of the enablers of a multi-chain future, which is cross-chain bridges and cross-chain messaging, we're not there yet. yet. You know, no, we're not there yet. Um, the security uh, incidents that happened last year are a you know, very important reminder for new users that they need to be careful when they use cross-chain bridges. 
so far, that's why I think on the Chrono side, we haven't over-invested on bridges. Uh, we've encouraged users to uh, rely on centralized exchanges, uh, such as crypto.com, uh, for on-ramp, off-ramp, and for cross-chain transfers. Uh, but I think that the what's happening this year uh, when it comes to bridges is very encouraging. Uh, you know, we're, at, we're now seeing some actors who have you know, broad recognition as very serious, very serious actors. And I would expect that in the coming months, uh, one of the next uh, AMA that we'll do uh, will be together with uh, one or more bridge partners uh, who will have integrated Kronos and will have uh, sort of been sufficiently battle, battle tested uh, to be uh, used by users you know, together with centralized options. So dropping some hints on, on what's, what might be going on in the coming months. Okay, um, so I think that's all the questions that we have for Ken and Matt today. But I saw there were some questions uh, in the comments, which I'll be bringing up. Uh, just knowing that we have a couple of minutes left. Right? So I'll be bringing up two questions. One question is by NMP. Right? So will gas fees on the rollups still be in Crow? Uh, perhaps, uh, Matt, you, you want to take it? Yeah. So the answer to this is that it's up to the application. But I think the more important thing uh, that this question is getting at is like, how does this affect Crow tokenomics? And so as Ken mentioned earlier, like every single rollup that's being deployed on top of Kronos, they need to pay for that those data posting costs in Kronos, uh, in, in Crow token. And so if a project decides that like, you know, they want to allow users to pay for fees in their like games native token, for example, at the end of the day, the rollup is still paying Crow tokens um, to post data. So it still is accruing, you know, value to that base layer and it's still consuming uh, some gas. But at the end of the day, like the projects do have the ability to choose which token gets shown to users as the native token for the rollup. Great. So a design consideration by the project themselves, but yeah. execution, posting data wise on the layer one would still be uh, the project was to be paying crew. Okay, thanks for the answer, Matt. Uh, next question by Mr. Kenneth. When uh, layer two? Right. Uh, any of you want to take this? Uh, so I think the question, if I, if I try to rephrase the question, so the question, so the layer two, the technology uh, is available right now uh, with Caldera. So the next question is, uh, like who is going to sign up to that technology uh, and work together with Caldera to be the, the first one to deploy a layer two. Uh, all bets, your, your guess is as good as mine. Um, uh, we'll, uh, uh, let, you know, let's have some internal bets on who will be the first step. <laughs> uh, but you know, I think it's important to manage expectations. Uh, the, a lot of the dApps uh, and games on Kronos are still uh, at the stage where they're um, finding their product market fit. Uh, to find the product market fit, it's important to focus first on the app and on the users, not so much on the infrastructure. Uh, and then uh, once you've uh, like understood what users really value in your app, then it's the time to, to migrate to a layer two, and I think what's really great with Caldera is that that migration can be pretty quick and painless. Right. Yeah, I think just just this week, I, I spoke to a dev that is um, looking to Kronos and asking about you know, roll-up solutions. So I, I guess there might be a potential uh, game, right, which I can introduce to, to Matt very soon. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, so we are around the time. Um, Right, almost the hour right now, right? So thanks so much for coming on today, both uh, Matt and Ken. Right, you guys, you guys gave a very exciting announcement today, and also much more clarity into what uh, Caldera and Kronos partnership entails, right? And how the rollup because uh, rollup solutions and rollup as a service will benefit both application developers and end users in the Kronos ecosystem. All right, so thanks so much for tuning in today uh, and to the speakers for coming on to speak. All right, and um, yeah, so that's about it right now. And thanks and have a good time, everyone. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Matt. Cool. Thanks so much, guys. Cheers. Okay, bye.